This video proves Allah is a pagan god, and his prophet Momo is pagan. All evidence are showed in this video, so please take note. And don't forget to share, like, comment on what you think on this video. And what do you want to talk about? So what uh, you said to me, uh, the black stone is a gift from Allah. First of all, why he sent this gift? It was the birthday of Muhammad. And I don't know. I like this answer because but, this is a very popular answer by Muslims. They don't know what they are worshipping. But why Allah he sent this gift? You said they do not know. Okay, what the purpose of this gift? I mean, in the Hadith it says that the messenger has kissed the stone, so... I know, I know, I know he kissed the stone. I ask a very, I ask a very well-known Muslim website in the chat, I asked them why the Prophet kissed the stone, it took them five minutes to answer. They said to me, because it's holy. Do you agree with them? But when holy means that it is a, yeah, it is sent by God or coming from paradise, then I agree. But that means everything sent from heaven is holy. Do you agree? From, from Allah, you mean? From, from heaven. heaven. You said to me, from heaven. Yeah, first of all, yeah, I would agree. Okay, but that means Adam is holy. Eve is holy. Shaitan is holy because mm -hmm. Shaitan was in heaven in Islam. I mean, Adam is, yeah, was a prophet, right? He's prophet to who? What do you mean prophet to who? I mean, there's only one guy and his wife. He was a prophet to who? I mean, prophet is means like... Um, what what he will prophesy? Adam will prophesy that uh, 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 later there's a guy. His name is Adam. Is going to be made by Allah. Give me one prophecy of a prophet Adam. Hmm. I only know that Adam is a prophet. Yeah, because you copy paste, but you I, never. I, but why you don't think about it? Think about it for a second. If somebody is a prophet, shouldn't he prophesy? Okay, I'm prophet too. What they prophesy? I mean, you know what? Let me tell you what I will prophesy. Something nobody knows. Yesterday, Trump, he will debate Biden, and he will win the debate. Yesterday, this is a prophecy nobody knows. So what the prophecy is of uh, your prophet is a false prophet. You made every, you Muslim. You made everybody a prophet. Even Zul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great, he become a prophet. I mean, Jesus was also mentioned as a prophet and a messenger. No, there is nowhere in the Quran mentioned Jesus. Can you show me where in the Quran says Jesus? If you can show me where Isa. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, I will shave my beard. Or Isa. Who is Isa? Which was born from Mary, right? Who is Mary, the sister of Aaron? Oh, it's not sister of Aaron. What? But Aaron and Moses, the, they exist no. thousand of years before Jesus. I, no, no, no. I, I know this this, uh, this chapter, this verse, and uh -huh. um, it's uh, mentioned. Yeah, it's one one at one time. It was mentioned. Okay, this Mary from thousand. I don't know which time before Jesus. Uh -huh. This Mary, and the mother, other Mary, which has born Jesus. Mm. And how uh, how the so father of Moses, how the father of Moses became the father of Mary. Do you the have explanation? Moses. Yeah, how the father of Moses became the father of Moses, Mary, because Which... according to the Quran, according to the Quran, Amran is the father of Mary, but Amran is the father of, of Moses and Aaron. This is what your Quran is saying. Chapter 3, verse number 35. The wife of Amran, she said, Oh my Lord. And look here, the funny is, that the wife of Amran, she is talking to Allah. Muhammad never spoke to Allah. I mean, your God, he speaks to women, but he doesn't speak to Muhammad. <laughs> Where is the guy, Amran, in the story? What he did? He was just the one who go to the bed? And how in the world Amran, the father of Aaron and Moses, 
they become the father of Maryam, the mother of Jesus. I will tell you why. Muhammad is a fake prophet. He misunderstood the Jews. He, they told him that the sister of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Moses, her name is Maryam, and this is true. Maryam is mentioned in the Old Testament, a great woman. So the stupid Muhammad, he thought that the same woman, her name is Maryam, she must be the mother of Jesus. So according to your prophet now, Mary, she is descendant from Amran, and Jesus is the grandson of Mr. Amran. Not Amran Khan in Pakistan, this is um, different Amran. Uh -huh. No, no, I, I've read about this chapter once, and I also asked the same question. I had the impression, yeah, this was also the case. But then later, I think in the later verses, it becomes quite clear that it's, we are talking about two Mariams. Um, one, also, I don't remember the names, but one we have uh, Moses and um, I think the other was Aaron, the brother, right? Both mm -hmm. of them were, were prophets, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think they also had um, a sister, which was Mariam. Mm. And their father was Amra, right? Mm. And? And, and the other one, we are talking about Mariam, who, um, who was then giving birth to Isa. Mm. And where we will end now? Still, you know, you're avoiding the question. How Maryam... What was the question? How Maryam, the mother of Jesus, become the daughter of Amran, the father of Moses? As I said, we are talking about two different Maryams and not no, the Maryams. According to your prophet, one according to your prophet, they are one, per one person. And the proof of that, first he said, the sister of Amran, a Jewish man, he came yes. to him and he corrected him. But it was too late because already he mentioned in the Quran that Mary is the daughter of Amran. So he cannot fix it no more. This is Quran now. So when he said it's this, uh, she is the sister of Aaron, a Jewish rabbi, he came to the house of Muhammad and Muhammad was not there. He spoke to Aisha. He said, according to the Hadith, there's hundreds of years before between uh, Isa and uh, mm -hmm. Aaron. Maryam and Aaron, they cannot be better and sisters. Aisha, she told, she told the guy, you are a liar. Which means this is really what Muhammad said. But when Muhammad heard the news, now he knew that he made a big poo, poo So he tried to fix it, but it was too late. Because if he tried to fix this, he said, they used to call them by their great uh, uh, ancestor prophets. But Aaron is not from the tribe of Mary. And he is not the greatest prophet. So now we have two places proving that Muhammad is a fraud. One saying Mary is the sister of Aaron, chapter 19, verse 28. And the other one saying that Mary is the daughter of Amran, chapter 3, verse number 140, sorry, uh, 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 35. 35? Yeah. Chapter 3 is 35. Uh -huh. All of this leads us to understand that Muhammad is an ignorant. He does not know what he's talking about. Now I will give you, I will, I will be easy with you. Do you know even who is Muhammad? The messenger. Who is he? Look, here it says Mary, the daughter of Amran. Okay. Mary, the sister of Aaron. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Isaac, the son of uh, Abraham. Okay. Jacob. Okay. Who is Muhammad? He was born to to uh, to a family of pagans who is muhammad what do you mean by who he... mary the daughter the, the the sister of aaron the daughter of amran his, jesus, his family tree. listen based on the quran jesus is the son of mary mary is the daughter of amran mm -hmm. the sister of aaron look how many names 
explain to us who is Mary and Jesus. Who is Muhammad? Who is his father? I don't know. Who is his mother? I don't know, but why should it be important? How, 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 why it should be important who is Mary then? How come it's important who is Isaac? How come we have the name of everybody and we have details about everybody, but the most important person in the whole book, there's no information about him, where he's born. The Quran says that Muhammad, he sent, Allah, he sent Muhammad to the mother of the villages. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Mother of the villages. Uh-huh. Seems to be some leader of the village. Where is the mother of the villages? Which place? Mecca. How do you know? How Mecca is going to be the mother of the villages if it's a small, tiny village? Wasn't Mohammed born was, in Mecca? Was Mecca the capital of Rome? Was Mecca the biggest city in the Arabian Peninsula? No, no, but it was it was already a place where people went to to where, worship. Okay, their where is Mecca? Island. Where is Mecca in the story? It says this is a book confirming what they have between their hands, which means the Christians, to warn mm -hmm. the the mother of the villages and what is around it. Where is that location? Mother of villages and those around her, those huh? mm, yeah, careful with the devotion. Uh, is it we are talking about the person here? We are talking the about what? the villages, the mother of the villages. Is mm. it a person or are we talking about a place? What do you think? That's a good question. Place. That's a good Place. question. Why? Why in, in the this... world he want to use the word the term mother, if this is, you know. I think it's a place. Also from logical. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, this what the place. Muslim they say. Yeah. This what the Muslim they say. But no problem. But why it is the mother? Why not the father? Ah, because a, a Makkah is a female. Do we agree with me? Mm. Yeah, could make sense. Yeah. Okay, so why why the, why the town is a female? I don't know because, for example, <laughs> we also say, say that the state is the father. The the what? Why is the male the state? The state or the state? Yeah. What state? Um, for example, in I come from Germany. Uh -huh. And we also say um, <clears throat> uh, father state, or yeah. Hmm. So you are saying it's a language thing. Yeah, it could be a no language problem. Thing, Still, yeah. where is Mecca now? Where is Mecca? Where is this mother of the? Let us assume that this is Mecca. Where is Mecca located? Ge where is Mecca located? Geolog huh? Ge geological. What geological? There's no proof of Mecca existence ever. There's no book in the world mentions such a city or a town. Nobody. We have tons of historians. Nobody mentioned them. In fact, the Quran, if you know, maybe Me it, Mecca was not called Mecca at the time. Uh, maybe it was not Mecca. Huh? Okay. Look what no, the Quran says here. Mecca. Even the Quran, even the Quran is not sure about the name of the city. The the first book, the first house built for Allah was in the city of Bakka. It doesn't say city actually, mm -hmm. it says at Bakka. Bakka, but it, it means Mecca, right? No. How, how, that, how, it how, it mean, Mecca. how that it mean Mecca? I mean this, um, at this place, there was a stone, the stone, right? Mm. So what we, I think, have you what ever heard? heard I, I, will, I will make I will I will make it easier for you. Have you ever heard yeah. of a temple? It's called the temple of 
Makkah. No. The temple of Al-Makkah is a very well-known temple in Yemen. You never temple heard of it? Of Mecca. it, it isn't, it, isn't it the same as the Great Mosque of Mecca? It is a temple for the, the moon god. It is a temple for the moon god. The home to the Kaaba. So, so where the Kaaba is? No, it is in Yemen. You are talking about Mecca today, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm talking Great about Mosque. the real Mecca. The real Mecca never was in that location. The real Mecca is the temple of al Makkah. Al means that. Mecca is the exact name. The temple of al Makkah is the temple which is located in Yemen, which is a temple for the moon god. You know, when I say it long, long time ago, this is the temple of the moon god. At that time, the scientist or supposed as researcher, they were saying, no, it is the moon god. Lately, they fixed their mistake and they agree. They made a big mistake after they were able to read uh, the writing, which is a very ancient writing. It turned to be, I was right. This is the temple of al Makkah, which is the moon god temple. And this is where Mecca is. Mecca today is a counterfeit of the original Mecca. Uh, why why did it became a count uh, a fake place now? Uh, why did why did the place change? What's the, the reason? The, the place did not change. What they do, this is the most famous center place of worship. So people they bring stones mm -hmm. from those places, and those stones will save you from going all the way to kiss them. So you can get the blessing. Why you want to go all the way to Yemen to kiss the black stone? We bring you the stones to you. You kiss it here, and you worship it here, and your sin is forgiven. So in order to go, it take you two months, and the journey of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the pirate and the thief and killing, and maybe even they enslave you, just come to here. We have the same stones. Do you know that in the, in the Kaaba today, they have a, a corner, it's called the Yemeni corner? No. Let me show you. So basically, your your uh, your point was okay. They changed the place to to the current now Mecca because it's easier to. They did reach, not or... change. They did not change the place. This is not a, 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 a this is not a place to change. No, they just build a new place of worship. Copy the name mm -hmm. of the original Mecca. And they brought ah, some okay. stones, they brought some stones from that place. So people, they will come and receive the blessing of the moon god, Allah. So if we go is, right now. Is there some, okay, can you show me some historical evidence that no this was? No problem. Huh? No problem. Give me a second. I will try to show you some pictures too. You can go right now and search for the Yemeni corner in the Kaaba. Yemeni corner in the Kaaba. Yemeni corner. Right away, you will see that the reason it's called Yemeni corner is very simple. Because simply, they brought stones from that place. This is why even they look different. Those stones look different from the rest of the building of the Kaaba. So they brought a few oh, stones. Okay. Yeah, they brought a few stones and they claim that those are coming from the temple of Al Makkah. So now, yes, okay. if you kiss them, it's the same as you went all the way to Yemen to do the ritual to worship the moon god there. So you do not need to go all the way to Yemen. You come here. This is why it's called Al Ruknul Yemani, which means the corner of Yemen. One corner have a black stone, and one corner have those stones. The black the stone, god. huh? Yeah, yeah. This is the moon god. The mo you can go. You yeah. can you can go right now and search for the uh, Al Makkah temple. Temple Al Makkah. Just take, no, take I, that. I, I just, uh, I take. Just yeah, it says it says that the Yemeni corner is so named because it faces the direction of Yemen. 
It is located on the southwestern side. That's false. What, uh, what, uh, what direction? You can see that they open the hole in the wall so people can kiss it. If this is for direction only, they will not open the skirt of the Kaaba. No, no. Let me continue. It is located on the western side of Kaaba, adjacent to the Black Stoner corner. So basically, doesn't it show to Yemen? Also, the direction to Yemen, so it also says, okay, it comes from Yemen. Okay, so those stones are coming from Yemen, and now yeah. we do not need to go and worship in the true Mecca, which is, is in Yemen. So the true Mecca is not the one is in Saudi Arabia, and you will notice that both of them, they have exactly the same name. They have exactly the same, same name, al Makkah. Um, this moon god, you talked about, you uh, talked about this um, three daughters of Allah. Wasn't this the, the daughters of the moon god? The, yes, the, 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 the three daughters, the sun god, the, 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 the moon god, he married from the sun god. Not the sun, mm -hmm. see? There is people they confuse between when we say the moon god, they think we are talking about the moon. No, no. The moon god is not the moon. The moon god is the god who is in control of the moon. The sun god is not yes. the sun. The sun god is the god, the goddess is a female who is in control of the sun. Yes. And because so the free daughters and the Arab and the Arab and the Arab, because they consider female as a bad thing so they decide and even people before them in the Middle East that the sun god is the harmful one because she is the female this is why she is the one who killed their uh, 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 crops she is the one who make their water disappear she is the evil one you know the male god is Allah he is the moon god he is the god when you know he make our night nice we sit outside in the heat we will not be burned in the in this crazy sun. So the sun god is a nice god. The moon god is a nice god. The sun god is the evil one, and that is the female. So the 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 moon god married from the sun god, which is a female, and they have a three daughters, which is Alat and Al Uzza and Manat. Three daughters. Yes. Okay, and uh, for example, in chapter. Um, 53 uh, was uh, 19 and so on it says it mentions those names right and then it also says in verse uh, 23 um, these are nothing but names which you have devised you and your ancestors for which Allah sent down no authority they follow nothing but assumptions and what the ego desires even though guidance has come to them from the Lord so basically what it is saying that, okay, these, these don't belong to the Allah that are to the God that is mentioned in the Quran. I will, I will tell you why Muhammad, he, or so-called Muhammad, he don't want the three daughters of Allah to belong to Allah. Because Allah... Because they are females. Because they are females, oh, wow. exactly. So all the idea the Quran reject, are you going to worship the females? So, the female is not the same as the male, even that in chapter 3, verse number 36. And then you will find that Allah, he said, clearly, the one they are worshipping is nothing but females. So, what Islam is coming to, to make, like now we, we start worshipping Allah and Akbar, but Allah is the male and Allah is the one who deserves to be worshipped only. Allah and Akbar is the God, but Allah is the, dom the, 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 the domain, the one who dominate, the goddess. So they worship nothing but, uh, but female deity. Allah is not a female deity. So Muhammad rejection was not because those are uh, not God, because they are females. That's all. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then, but, okay, and then but... you need to ask yourself, the, the the verse the verse you mentioned to me that it says 53. this this is their assumption correct 
Chapter 53. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... But, but I sh mean, shouldn't Allah, but, shouldn't Allah, he say, that this is totally false, what assumption? Either it's false or not. I mean, he's basically saying it is uh, false. So, so we have, we can... Uh, read no, from no, there, he, did okay. not, he, he did not, he, he did not say they are false. He did not say they no, are no, false. No, no, he didn't, he, he did not say, it's not, not directly. But we can see from the text, okay, we acknowledge there is an existence like Allah, or this moon god or sun god, who has three daughters, right? Because they are directly mentioned there, explicitly no, mentioned. No problem, you see. It's no problem. But you, you will notice. You will notice that there is a story where Muhammad he sent Farid ibn Walid. Have you ever heard of something called the, the uh, what they call it in English? Uh, I'm trying to remember the word in English. The where Khalid ibn Walid he went and he killed uh, uh, Al Uzza. You know the story. Al you know the story? No. Which, okay. which hadith? No. Just to show you how Islam is nothing but collection of fiction and stupidity. Uh, is it Sahih? Yeah, yeah, this is Sahih for sure. Uh, uh, search for Khalid ibn al-Warid expedition to kill Al-Uzza. Can you just share it on the screen? Let me find it. Hold on. Because I need to find it in English. Or what we will have is going to be in Arabic, but let us see. All right, here we go. This is translated by Muslims, so we will use it. You will notice that Muhammad, he is so foolish to the point he confirm that Al Uzza is a real person, is not a fake daughter of Allah. So he claimed that he sent Khalid to kill it. Al Uzza is not an idol, it is a real person. When the message of Allah, you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. When the message of Allah conquered Mecca, he sent Khalid al Walid uh, to the area of Al Nakhla, where the idol of Al Uzza was uh, located. On three threes, of a forest and this is just a few palm trees not really forced Khalid cut the three trees and approached the house built around it and destroyed it when he went back the prophet informed he informed the story to, to muhammad the prophet said to him go back and finish your mission what was the mission the mission was to kill al uzza so he said to him, go back and finish your mission, which means you did not do it yet. She is still there. Khalid went back and when he get close by, who were also the, his its servant, the servant of Al-Uzza, Al-Uzza saw him. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Al-Uzza Al saw him uh, they, and they started invoking by calling Al-Uzza. When Khalid approached it, he found a naked woman whose hair was untied, untidy, and who was throwing sand on her head. Khalid killed her with his sword, and he went back to the Messenger of Allah, who he said to him, that was Al-Uzza. Do you see it? Yes. So is Al-Uzza, according to Muhammad, is an idol or a real person? I mean, according to this story, it is, yeah, um, a person. So how Al-Uzza, how Al-Uzza is, is a pagan god, but yet it is a real woman. I mean, even the, in the pre, um, when I opened Wikipedia and so on, um, it was an, a goddess which was worshipped in the pre-Islamic time, right? So it's no, no, also, I'm not talking I, about this now. I'm a little bit confused. No, no, focus on me, focus on me. We're trying to find out if Allah, the God of the Arab, the moon God, truly he have three daughters or they are fiction names. Like the name of Allah is a fiction name. According to Muhammad, he did not say this is the one who claimed to be Al-Uzza. He said that was Al-Uzza. Mm-hmm. 
Correct? Mm -hmm. So based on this, yeah. Allah truly yeah. he have three daughters. And Muhammad, he claimed he just killed one of them. By the way, how, how did Muhammad know that he was not dead? Ask no questions. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Ask no <laughs> questions. <laughs> Muhammad knows best. He is Allah. He is Allah himself. I mean, Muhammad, he knew anything. He can tell you even what the size of her bra, what the size of her panty. This is Muhammad. No, but isn't this fact also kind of surprising? I mean, he was not there at this place, but he yeah, knew, you see, okay. You see, I debate Muslims about what they what, what they believe, not about if the story makes sense or not. As you know, nothing makes sense in Islam anyway. In fact, I believe that Muhammad himself never exists. Who is Muhammad? We don't know. There's no, there's nothing about him. Even when, even when the Arab, they invade Jerusalem, in the books there, it doesn't say a prophet, his name is Muhammad. It doesn't mention anything. It mentioned that savage Arab, the king. No religion, no prophet, nothing. But going back to our story, al uzza it have roots. It exists not only in the Arabian Peninsula, it's spread all over, and the name Allah is coming all the way from Persia, from Syria, from Turkey now. All these areas, they worship a God. He is the moon God. You know, what, what was dominating the earth is two God. The ones who live in the cold area, usually, they worship the sun. Those who live in the desert where the sun is scary, they hate the sun. They worship the moon. And in order to avoid the anger of either one, they start worshiping the moon god who married the sun god who have three daughters. And the three daughters now, they are mixed of the element of the earth. The water, the air, and the dirt. The three daughters of Allah is the one who combine the kindness of Allah as a moon god at night, don't burn us, and the strength of the sun, which is still we need. So this is why the three daughters, they become the intercession of the believers. And this is why, and I'm sure you heard of Muhammad receiving satanic verses Correct? Do you know it? Mm, I heard about it once. But, what, what the uh, satanic verses? Muhammad, he claimed that shaitan, he gave him verses that the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must to ask for. Can you show me? Where is this mentioned? Yeah, yeah, we can, you know, if we go right now here, you know, if we go to the story of Al Gharaniq. Is it not is it the hadith or is it mentioned Quran? No, no, no. This is uh, you know uh, if you go to the chapter of An Najm, let me give me give me a second. If you go to An Najm, you will see the following. Chapter, yeah. chapter, 53, chapter 53, verse number okay. 1. Your prophet was reciting the chapter of an najm When najmu ida hawa. Let us see if we can find. Uh, give me a second. Uh, All right. So if we go and read the following. Um, uh, 
Let us go to this verse here first. Then we will go to the interpretation. But this is supposedly Muhammad was reciting an Najm. But the verse about it is mentioned in different place in chapter 22, verse number 52. So never we send, 52. yeah, never we send any messenger, prophet before you, but when he recite revelation, shaitan he cast some falsehood in it. So the Quran confirm that shaitan he gave Muhammad satanic verses. So let's go first to chapter 22. Verse number 52. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to let me read it again. Oh, I will go back. No problem. And that would lead us what was really the religion of Muhammad. And Muhammad was one of the worshippers of the three daughters of Allah. Uh, so if we go. And read here this is the official government website of the kingdom of Jordan all right so one day the prophet who sat with the congregation of Quraysh which attracted attract a huge number of its members and he wished that Allah so listen to this Muhammad he prayed to Allah that Allah will give him something today to recite and that recitation will make the people of Quraysh agree with him. So do you understand what he wished for? He, he wished that Allah, the exalted, does not reveal to him on that day anything that might repeal them. So what he want him? He want Allah to recite to him, to give him something would make the, the, the Arab pagan like what he is saying. This is what Muhammad prayed to Allah for. And then Allah he revealed to him the Surah of an najm By the star, the chapter I showed you, chapter 53. The messenger of Allah, Allah pray on him, not pleased with him. Recite it until when he reach to the point where he says, Have you have you thought upon Allah and Al Uzza and Manad the third, the other? The devil put in his tongue what he had secretly wished secretly wished did you see what uh, what what it says secretly wished and uh -huh. hoped that for and hoped for and said these are the mighty grants the garani and their intercession is hoped for therefore when Quraysh they heard this they were very pleased because this is what they they want the Quraysh they worship Allah too the Quraysh, they go to Waf, they kiss the black stone. Everything, 99% between Muhammad and Quraysh is approved except the daughters of Allah. And today, Muhammad, he praised the daughter of Allah. And not only he praised them, he worshipped them. He said their intercession is hoped for. So when they heard this, all the tribe of Quraysh, they were so pleased and they recite with him. And they bow and he bow down with them. Now we okay, know. This is, um, is it a tafsir by an imam? Or this, is, uh, this is Ibn, this is, this is the, uh, the book of Asbab al Nuzul by Imam Al, -wa al Wahidi. But this so is, Muslim, but you can Muslim find this, uh, my friend, you can find this in Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Al Jalalain, Ibn Kathir, everywhere. <laughs> this no, is no, a story. He is a Muslim himself, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the official government website yeah, of the Kingdom so, of Jordan, my friend. Yeah. This is the so this is the Kingdom of Jordan. Makes, this is the website. Hey, let, makes, let, let me give it to you. Let me give it to you. This is the okay. Kingdom of Jordan. This is not a joke. We can switch. We can switch to any interpretation you want. We can go to Mikathir. We can go to Al Qurtubi. You can go. No, no, no. Al I, 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 I believe you. Uh, but yeah. it, it just makes no sense that that an Imam himself himself would. But I mean, this is when it's true, or if you, if 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 we are just take it explicitly like this, it's talking bad about uh, the messenger, right? Exactly. But you see here. So so it it makes no, no sense that a Muslim or an Imam himself would talk bad about 
the messenger, then he wouldn't be an imam. He's not talking bad. All the Muslims agree. Now, the Muslims, in order to solve this problem, they deny it. But as you see, they're imams. They, they approve it. And then later in Islam, in the history of Islam, the Muslims, they start trying to find solutions and say, well, no, we don't believe because this will be a contradiction. The Prophet was protected by Allah. But the Quran says it clearly, Allah will take off what shaitan he throw. So already shaitan he throw. And these details, as you see, is written by the Muslims, not by the Jews. This is as an example yeah. here, Tafsir al Jalalain. You know? I mean, this makes, this makes even it more, more, yeah, more yeah. So, not making but, sense. But, but what I'm telling you now, we are trying to connect the dots together between the moon god, Allah, the temple of Al Makkah, which we showed you it is located in Yemen, which is the temple of the moon god, the Yemeni corner, the black stone, the three daughters of Allah. And now let us show you the, 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 the sun god. In the Quran, it mentioned it clearly that Abraham, he worshipped the sun. Where is it mentioned? In when, the Quran. When Abraham uh, worshipped the sun, what he called the sun? He called it Akbar. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ بَادِغَةً قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرُ Do you see it? But it doesn't mean that he's worshipping the sun. No, he said, this is, Just... my, this is my God. He said, this is my God, this is Akbar. No, no, he, yes, he said this, but... Okay, we can see here, or can read here, okay, he saw... He saw the sun rising up and then he begins to pray. But it doesn't mean that he prays to the sun. No, no, no. He said, this is my God. Where does he say this is my God? It's in the front of you. When he saw the sun rising, he said, this is my God. This is Akbar. And the name of his God, Akbar. Yeah, I mean, kind of far-stretched interpretation. I don't know. What what interpretation? That, okay, it says, this is my law. Yeah, so basically he could also mean, uh, this is my Lord's doing. Yeah, rising. What is, no, 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 he was, up. my friend, why, why you are not listening? Uh, Abraham, he saw the moon. He said, this is my God. He worshipped the moon. He saw a yes. planet before it. He saw it, he said, this is my God. So he start worshiping a star first, then he switched to worship the moon, and then he switched to worship Akbar. <laughs> As of what I can read here, uh, read the full passage of this. My friend, read you, the full passage do you want me? Uh, yeah, I don't know, you see, you wanna, I don't know, you know, it's it's no, it's I, obvious. I Anyone? Language. Okay. What is your language? What is your language? You said you said German. Should I switch to German language? You can switch to German. I I've read this passage. Okay. And it's all about, in German. All in saying, German, it doesn't say that Abraham he worshipped the moon and we worshipped the sun. Yeah. Just read the whole passage and also what's after. Then it's clear that he means okay, what, all what, this what, creation. What do you, what what do you understand? Did did Abraham worship the moon? No. No? Okay. He worship it as a creation of God. No, no. no. How you can worship it as a God, a creation of God? No, he called it, this is my God. <laughs> he said, Hada we... Rabbi, Hada Rabbi. This is my God. Yes, I know. I, I, I can read it. I can read. I can okay, read. Okay, okay, listen. But... What interpretation you like me to show you? No, don't just read the passage after that. So, so listen, I am telling you, this is what it means. If the interpretation agree with you, then you are right. He was look as so basically he was looking for God. No, he worshipped the, uh, the the sun. He worshipped the moon, and he called the sun. Interpret? Oh boy! Listen, I thought you are you are you are a decent person, and you uh, you you want to play games, but look what's happening now. No, I don't now. play games. So okay, why so, do I assume so, that I play games? Why so what about we games? go and see the interpretation for the verse made by the scholars? Okay. 
Okay. Let's read the interpretation. Six, 677. Let us see. This is 6. And this is 77. Read it. Okay. And when he saw the moon uprising, he exclaimed, This is my Lord. Could, it, could this be my Lord? This is bigger than the first one. What, when it said, he said, Unless my Lord guide me. Unless my Lord makes me firm on guidance. I surely shall become one of the folk who are astray from guidance. Okay. So now they are adding things, they're not there. So this is my Lord, this is my God. What is the God? The moon. Then he switched to the verse after it. Or we can go to the verse before it if you want. Where he saw the planet and he said, this is my God. Read it. And now it named for you which planet too. It says Venus. When the night grew dark upon him, in the hole, he behold the star, the planet Venus. He said, this is my God. And then they add here, could this be my, my God? But when it said, he don't like because it said, this whole story is stupid. But as you see, he is worshipping Venus. So basically for me, it means that he is looking for God. He is worshipping already Venus. He did. And he's, when he's and when, asking, could no, this, no, no, could this, this, is, this, is, this is no, this is addition. This is not in the Quran. Could he be my God? No, this is not in the Quran. He already this said, is, uh, no, he already said, this is my Lord. He didn't say, could this be my God? He said, this is my God. Let me change for you to translate the, the, the interpretation. He worship, he worship for real. So when the night descend, when it dark become upon him, he saw a star. Said to have uh, uh, said to be Venus, and said to his people who were ast uh, astro uh, astrologers, "This is my God, as you are want to claim." But when it said, when this appear, he says, "I love not those who said the story is so silly." It looked like Abraham, he never saw that the sun set and rise and the planet, they go up and down. And now suddenly he don't like the one who, don't, who disappear. So the story is very childish. But what I'm showing you here, that Abraham, according to the Quran, he worshipped three objects. One was Venus, one was the moon, and one was the, the sun. And the sun is the one called Akbar. Akbar. We go to Akbar. When he saw the sun rising, he said, This is my Lord. This is Akbar, not a greater. Then the star, then the star and the moon. The masculine demonstrative pronoun, etc. They are explaining Arabic now. And then he says, Uh... Because predict Rabbi, my Lord. Uh, this is explaining about the language. It's not important. And then he says, uh, Oh, my people, surely I am not, I am an innocent from what you associate with God uh, in the way of idols. But here you see already he worshipped the three. And now he decided not to worship the three. But the Quran doesn't tell us how Allah became the god of Abraham. Okay, he worshipped the moon, he worshipped the sun, he worshipped Venus. How Abraham, he found Allah? What is the story of Abraham with Allah? And if he don't worship those who disappear, how he will worship the one who he never saw? If the reason not to worship them, because they disappear. As the verse saying, 
how he worshiped the one who never appeared for him. Based on what the verse saying, Abraham will not accept to worship someone come and go. Allah never come, Allah never go. At least the sun and the moon and Venus, they are real. There is no proof of the existence of Allah. But the point I'm showing you here, Abraham, what, what, uh, Abraham, he called his God Akbar. You see, in Arabic, in Arabic, Akbar can be used as a word mean older, uh, bigger in size, uh, uh, greater, not a great, greater. A greater, but you have, but you have to put it uh, in a certain sentence uh, of continuous, which mean I can say Allahu Akbar. Why? Because if I want to say that sentence, I have to add something after it, because Akbar is the same as in English. You say it's bigger. So if I say uh, this. Person Akbar, I have to add another name of other person after him because I'm comparing. So Akbar is about comparing, is not just a you cannot end the sentence with it. As an example, I will copy this word here in front of you. You see the screen, right? Yes. And I will go to the Quran and I will type the word, I will post the word Akbar. As it is, with no addition. Here, this is Kabira. This is a different word. Here we go. Akbaru عند Allah. Do you see it? Chapter 22, verse 217. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Akbar mean you have to compare it to something else. So here it says, it is bigger for Allah, but compare about what? About sin. About the moon. No, no, this is about sin now. And here it's about sin. So you are comparing ah. about something, two, two kind of sin. Which one, which one is the one who is big? As an example, chapter 2, verse number 219. It says here, and it, it is sin is bigger than it is benefit. So chapter 2, verse number 219, speaking about uh, uh, alcohol. So but the sin of them is, you see here, it says greater. You see, you have to add than. Do you see it? Yes, yes. All right. So Akbar cannot be what the Muslim today they are using as a word meaning greater. Akbar is a, is a name for the God. Because if Akbar meaning greater, then you have to continue. Greater than who? Um, so, okay. I want uh, one question. Uh, for example, in English, you normally say, uh, when, you, when you do uh, this, um, when you use word like bigger, smaller, and so on, normally, um, additional word like then follows, right? Yeah. For so example, I, I am bigger than you, or you are, I am smaller than you, right? This is the normal case. But sometimes when I said, okay, um, you are Christian prince and I am smaller. So this also makes sense, but it's... My, my friend, my friend. It's a, but that, but, it's the, but the, still... It's not complete. But still, you have, you are comparing between two humans. So now we, people, they knew that there is you and there is me. And one is a smaller, one is bigger. That is fine. So where is the second person to compare? So, when you yeah. say Allah example, Akbar, this... when you say Allah Akbar, if you are saying if Allah is God, and then you say Akbar, and you are saying that the word Akbar means greater, then you have to compare him to who? If you say greater without saying to anyone, first of all, this is blasphemy against God. Why? The Muslim they yeah, say. I see your point. The Muslim they say you, you cannot compare Allah to anything. Correct. Yes. All right. No. But, yeah. I see, but, I see but, your but, point. but then Akbar is a compare. If we cannot compare Allah to anything by using the word Akbar by itself is an insult. Allah Akbar from the ant. Allah Akbar from the rat. Okay. 
Allah Akbar. And I mean, this is stupid. So Allah is Akbar from who? You see, is not the great. It is greater, bigger. This is all either it's about size, either it's about value. It doesn't matter. Still, you are comparing the one who is supposedly God to his own creation. And if we can compare the ability of God to the ability of his creation by saying just Akbar, that means he is not really great. He is just greater. That means the other are great too. Okay, also, can I, can I say something? All right. <laughs> okay, when you, can, you, can you switch back to chapter 6, um, to this uh, verse 77, when it begins? Okay. So yeah. basically, I'm, I'm reading the German translation, and All in right. German we have uh, three articles. Uh, that, that means, for example, in, in English you only have the. And in German we have three articles, der, die, das, yeah, that is uh, referring to a noun. So for, for the German, it is very clear that when I, that first of all in 77, he's talking about the moon. In 78, he's talking about the sun. And he will say, okay, this is my Lord. And this one, this the sun, is bigger. Okay, wonderful. So the sun is bigger. So than, the sun is bigger from who? Than the moon. Thank you. From the, no, the sun is bigger than the moon. Wonderful. Right. See, but now look what you did. Allah Akbar. Allah is bigger from who? The sun, or what do you? Well. <laughs> So Allah is bigger than the sun? What does that mean? No, also this is greater. This is this is greater refers to the moon. How how Allah greater is greater than, than the moon? I mean, my friend, listen. So, no, the God sun, the sun is can, greater than order, the moon. In order, to, moon. in order to compare Allah to the moon, he have to be a planet like the moon. In order no, to compare Allah, <laughs> I cannot compare. Can I can I say Allah is greater than the earth? Okay, what, what he's saying is that this is my law, right? Yeah. He, he was... This is great. This is greater. So when Correct. he looked at the sun, he says this is greater than the moon. So the sun wonderful, is greater than the moon. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm going with you. So when we say Allah is Akbar, Allah is greater than who? Than the moon. <laughs> according to, to, to those two passages. But when you read 79... No, no, yeah, and focus, focus on me. Uh, focus. As long we agree, <laughs> as long we agree that the word Akbar is about uh, either size or value, but it's about compare. Do we agree? Okay, I agree. Okay, From that so we passages, cannot stop. We cannot say Allah Akbar. We have to compare. Where is the rest of the sentence? If I want to say Allah is Akbar, I have to say Akbar from the moon, Akbar from the star, Akbar from the sky. I have to mention I'm comparing to the, 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 the statement of the Quran is very cut. So Allah Akbar, Akbar from who? You should say something. The only way, the only reason for it, it doesn't have anything behind it because this is a name. It is not a word. To compare otherwise if it's a compare we have to add something behind it so i say this apple bigger than this apple i cannot say this apple bigger without saying bigger than what why do you why do you think muslims say allah akbar it's not they are not saying allah akbar they say allahu akbar allahu akbar who in arabic mean wa allah and akbar when the when the new Quran is written, they the the wow, the, there is a guy who he came with those. Uh, do you see those things in the Arabic here? Those uh, uh, valves in the top and dots, you know, those they were not exist. They never mm -hmm. been exist. So now we have something called dhamma. So he make he make Allah who and he took the wow and he make a dhamma. But in reality, there's a letter, it's called Wa, which means and. So Allah and Akbar. So Tawheed in Islam mm -hmm. is unifying the God of the moon God, Allah, which is not Allah, by the way, it is La, and Akbar. So if you go, uh, if you go in, in, the, in the first chapter in the Quran, or let us say, you know, 
uh, when Muhammad is start mentioning first time the word Rahman as an example. Mm -hmm. You will see that the word Rahman here, the see, you see the way I'm writing the word Rahman? Mm -hmm. The Muslim, they write it differently now. They try to, you know, to manipulate the, the, the sentence. If I type the word Bism, just to show you how the Quran is a changed big deal in Arabic. Do you see how the word Bism here? Yeah. Do you yeah. see how the word Rahman here? Yeah. Do you see here, if you zoom with me, let me see, if I click in it. If I can zoom more. Do you see here, there's a little tiny column in the middle of the, in the top. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. That is Aleph. They change the way they write the word. They fabricate a new Quran. Do you see the word Bism here? In Arabic, there is no such a word. It is Bism. Bism. So if I go now type the same word again, but in the correct way, I will find this. Do you see even it's not coming? Let us see. Hold on. Look at this. Look at this. This is the correct way to say Bism. There's no Bism. Never exists in Arabic. So they deleted a letter from the Quran word, Bism, just for the sake of singing the Quran. So when they sing the Quran, Bismillah, so it doesn't sound right. So what they do? They corrupt their book and they took the word Bism and they make it Bism. Even Muslim scholars agree that this is what happened. The Alif, the letter A is totally deleted. Same way they did with the Rahman. The Rahman, Ar Rahman. They took the Aleph, they make it small, they write it down. So now what the Muslim they do when they do mathematic, uh, mathematical miracle, they don't calculate those numbers. I don't know if you heard the, the miracle of number 19. So they don't calculate the correct numbers of those letters. As an example, there's each one, you see those, do you see this uh, uh, here in the top of Allah, there is like a little knife, sharp knife, small one. Can you see it? Yeah. That yeah. is Shadda, which means there's two letters here. Each time you see it in the, uh, in the screen, that means there's two letters, not one. That will make okay, them 24, but, but, 25 letters instead of 19. So the Muslim, they fabricate everything. They change everything. But what I want from you today to know with me, the word Allah is not the name of the God of Islam. Allah oh. is two words. A-L in Arabic okay. mean, mean that. Oh. That. A-L, that. But in the old Aramaic language, A-L is a word meaning God, even in Hebrew, even in Hebrew. So Israel used okay. to be used to be called Israel, not Israel. Mikael used to be called Mikael, not Mikael. Uh, 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 all, all the names, Il was, uh, was Al. Il is the new Hebrew. Al is the old Hebrew. Il is the old Aramaic. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah here appear as you see as Muslim they know it always but this is not the name it is two words al which mean God and lah look what happened in the second verse alhamdulillah li lah you cannot delete letters from the name if it is a name I cannot say I cannot delete the letter M from the name of Muhammad I cannot delete oh. I cannot delete okay. them. I cannot delete. I can delete only letters if they are addition to the word. So, Alhamdulillah, that is the name of the Muslim God. La. Okay. Also, can I say something? So, hold on, let me finish my. my so, now let us. Okay. Let, let, so, now when the Muslim they say Allahu Akbar, they are saying Al, which means God, La, and Akbar. God. La Akbar. And the word, the letter between them is wa. Allahu Akbar. Al is a word meaning God. La is the name of the first God. Akbar is the name of the wife of Allah, which is the son God. Go ahead.
Ooh, uh, okay, so first of all, I want to add something to the previous uh, topic with the, in chapter six that I just read 79. And there he uh, says that, uh, okay, Allah, I have um, um, can you can you go there again, and then we will talk about this. Okay, what, uh, tell me what do you want. What do you want to do? Okay, seven nine, chapter six seventy nine. Okay, so basically after the verse is the sun. Uh, uh, okay, I will go to the English translation to so that everyone. I mean, English translation, I'm not a fan of because there are many mistranslations sometimes. My friend, because English, all translation, uh, all translation made by Muslims is a fabrication. So I want to advise you, oh. if you want to know how stupid the Quran is, you better study Arabic because all translators, they do one thing. If they want their Quran to be approved, they have to be presenting a hypocrite. The Muslim will not buy it. Is going to stay in the shelf and nobody will list the translation in their website. Translation is the biggest lie in the history of Islam. They always lie. There's not a single Islamic translation. Is you're also argumenting with the translation often. Because I'm not I'm, because I'm not a Muslim. If I'm a Muslim, I will lie. Because what, what the Muslim translation is to make Islam look better. And they compete in that. So if this translation is better, the one who is debating me, he will say, no, no, I accept this translation. Better in which way? Better to present his okay, case okay. to make Islam look better. So okay. I, I say so, to you, so I say to you, listen, there's a website, it's called Quran.com. Yeah. In that website, when you move the mouse in the top of each word by itself, it gives you what the word by itself meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will do this. That will give you um, a translation, but not full sentence. The second you, you go to the full sentence, the translation is messed up. I, I will give you an example. You know, like the, the, the Muslim, they say, uh, I lie when I say that the Quran said you have to worship Allah and the Messiah. I mean, if you know that the translation is a lie, then you shouldn't use it. Uh, I'm not using it. I'm not, I, but I have you no choice. Make your point sometimes. I'm, no, I'm. I'm just. I'm just uh, using it to you. But for me, I don't accept it. I never. I never accept any Muslim translation. I always okay, point. But, I always can, point can when, I'm, when I'm reading. I always point when I'm reading that this is a false translation. Can we end seventy uh, chapter six first? This topic first. All right, go ahead. Let's just end this verse with the uh, with the last. Uh, Verse, okay. for, yeah, in 79 it says, okay, I have turned my face towards him who created the heavens and the earth as one of the natures, I'm, and I'm not one of the idolaters. Okay, and, yeah? and? So he's saying here basically, okay, he turned his face to the moon, to the sun, and so on. Mm. So basically he's saying, okay, I have turned to the one who created the heavens and the earth, yeah, which implies okay, which implies also the moon and the sun, and as of nature are bright. And I'm not one of the idolaters. So and? he's saying that he's not worshiping the moon or no, the no. sun. No, no, he all the Muslim the scholars. Listen, I mean, I, I don't know. I I don't want to repeat myself. Oh, the Quran is so clear, even in their translation. Here he's saying he don't want to worship him no more. Because already he said, they are my God. He didn't say, is that possible? This is my God. No. He confirmed that this is my God. Why are you being slow? He said, this is my God. He didn't say maybe. If he is saying maybe, that means he is a questioning. He did not say maybe. He said, this is my God. But when this God disappear, he said, I don't like the one who disappear. And then he come to the conclusion, after worshiping three gods, that he will worship the one which is unknown, which is more stupid. Because if the reason for him not to worship the first three anymore, because they go astray, well, this God who is worshiping, he never saw him. He never spoke to him. He never appeared to him. 
How he now recognize who is this God? I worship the one who created the earth and the heaven. Which one is the who, who is this one? Who is this one who created the earth and the heaven? Unknown uh, God. Are you question? Do you question me? Yeah, yeah. This is unknown God. Who is this one who created the earth and heaven? Yeah, Allah. Where is Allah? How he knew about Allah? Where is the story? How Abraham was able to receive a word of a person, his name is Allah. Shouldn't the story tell us how he recognized Allah? How he find out there's a God, his name is Allah. That's it, he walk in the street, and then he says, I'm going to worship. That means Allah exists. That means people in, around him, they are already worshiping Allah. Otherwise, how he knew this God? If this God never well, came to him, if this God never appeared to him, if this God never say hello to him, how Abraham he knew this God? But in 80 it says, Allah, when he hath guided me. So how, but how, where, where is Allah? How, how he learned about Allah? <laughs> it doesn't say to us, the guy he jumped from worshiping moons and stars to Allah. Now we will go and find out how this has happened. Allah is already the God in that Arabia, in that area. He is the God. Those people, they are worshiping other idols as intercessors. So Abraham now is not worshiping a new God. This is the, the same God they worship. The only reason, the only difference between them, this God, he should be worshiped alone. They want to have intercession. And that is again, take us back to Allah and al Uzza. All of them, they are pagan. Allah is a pagan God. Abraham was worshiping the pagan God and he stayed. In fact, in the same verse there, it says, and I am pagan. The Muslim did not know what the word Hanif mean. Look how stupid they are. They said here that Abraham, he says, Hanif, I am Hanif. But Hanif mean I am pagan. <laughs> so the Muslim today, they say that they are, Muhammad is a prophet of Allah. He was Hanif like Abraham. But Hanif mean kafir. <laughs> Hanif mean pagan. Hanif mean idol worshiper. Hanif is not a good word. This is an Aramaic hey. word. This is an Aramaic word. Have nothing to do with Arabic. So, when Muhammad, he said such a st statement, he just said that he is Hanif like Abraham, which means he is an idol worshiper. Hanif. Why is it to say that I am not one of the idolaters? This is not what it says. They think Hanif is the opposite. In fact, Hanif is a word mean kafir. Hanif mean infidel. Pagan. Muhammad did not know what the word mean. He just heard the word. Yeah. You know? What, what, the, mm -hmm. what the word Hanif is, that when you are rejecting, uh, uh, let us say, the true God, that, that will make you Hanif. Not when you are a good person. When you are a pagan person. You, when you are a kafir. Muhammad can you is, prove me this meaning? You can go right now and check the, the Aramaic dictionary and you can see. Search what the word Hanif mean. This is an Aramaic word. This is not a secret. You can go to uh, go to Sam Shamon. He speaks Aramaic. Ask him what Hanif mean. This is a language. This is not... Yeah, but, uh, but, but from Arabic. From Arabic. This is not Arabic. <laughs> This is not Arabic to get the meaning in Arabic. You see, the Arab did not know what the word mean. Most of the Quran, there's nothing Arabic in it. Allah is not Arabic word. Allah how's the Muslim what the word Arabic mean? For example, if I if I put it into Google Translate, this word it says polytheism. Uh mean what? Polytheism. That that means more than one God. Exactly. 
Yeah. Thank you and, very much. Yeah, if I, but he is saying yeah. here, I am Hanif. I am polytheist. <laughs> Isn't he? Okay, I, I, I only know the translation. Isn't he saying, I'm not one? I'm not one. Where is this, I'm not one? I am not one. That means I'm there? not monotheist. I am not monotheist. When he say, I am a oh. Hanif, he just said, I am not a monotheist. So how the Muslim, they think that Hanif mean monotheist when it is mean, he is not monotheist. He is a person who worship multi-gods. So if I look, if I put this word that, that you have um, marked yeah, into the Google Translate, it says polytheism. Yeah, you know, for me, I don't approve everything in Google, but uh, uh, they are giving you a very close meaning. So this is what Abraham mean, or he said here, but this is destroy the Quran because he is saying, I am not a monotheist. So how now Abraham, he found Allah and he is not a monotheist. He's a polytheist. See, everything in this religion is a collection of stupidity. Hanif is a person who worship idols. It's not a person who worship the true God. So when the Quran says, Abraham, he says, I am a Hanif, he just said, I am an idol worshiper. Okay, I just looked up the, um, the Aramaic uh, interpretation. And it says, uh, Hanifia means inclination in the language and terminologically in Aramaic or inclination towards the truth in Arabic. The triple root is mentioned in the Quran in 12 verses. We note that in most of them, he is a connection with the prophet Abraham, whom the Quran described as upright. It was stigmatized by the Arabs who abandoned the worship of idols and abandoned the religion of those around them. This is what they are giving you according to the Muslim, what they say, but this is not what it is. This is what the Muslim believe. But this is not the true meaning. Hanif, today the Muslim believe Hanif means the opposite according to them. But this is not an Arabic word. Now you cannot change the meaning. But they cannot, they cannot fix it except by saying that. Otherwise, they will admit that Muhammad is a liar and he is making up a big mistake. The same as the Quran says that uh, Abraham, he said to his father, Azar. Azar is an Aramaic word. Muslims do not know what they mean. So they think that the word Azar is a name. But the word Azar means stupid. So the ignorant Muhammad he did not know what the word mean. He thought that this is the name of the father of Abraham. But Abraham, he said to his father, stupid, do you worship idols? <laughs> so the stupid Muhammad, who do not know Arabic, the same as the word Hanif, he thought it mean the opposite. He said now, Azar is the father of uh, Abraham. But no, Muhammad is copying or whoever wrote the Quran. He is copying from the Aramaic book that Abraham, he said to his father, and because the guy who is copying, he don't obviously speak good Aramaic. He said to him, Azar. So the stupid, he do not know what this word means. He thought that he said to his father, Azar, which means this is the name of the father. But the fact Abraham saying to his father, stupid, do you take idols as gods? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so what you can see here that um, okay that you you say that the words that were used here that they have a different meaning, right? Originally, the Arab they have nothing to do with the Quran. The Arabic Quran today is total fabrication. Even the word Ibrahim. If you ask the Muslim what yeah, Ibrahim but... mean, they do not know. Ask any Muslim. Okay, I, I don't. All right, I all don't right. know about this. My, my I'm friend, just my friend. Talking about... the, the point I'm trying to say to you. If you take the Quran okay, your, from the Muslims, the, the Muslims are the last one can explain the Quran for you. Because they are under the influence of he said, she said. Not under academic study. 
You know, Yasser Qadi, when he says, if you go and make a deep dive, the story is different. Okay, let it let it aside. Let let this aside. I'm, I I just want to talk about because you also said um, <clears throat> words about the words itself that um, they have a different meaning. But we can see that in uh, during throughout the history that words, even in every language, their meaning have changed over time. Okay. For example, the word for example the word awful. I know this um, in orig originally it it means nice, yeah, something very awesome. But over the course of time, awful means now something bad. My friend, no problem. I don't know. But you see, I don't know but if we have. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Abraham. Nice, yeah. Abraham. This is supposedly is a quotation of what Abraham said. So this is not a new language. This is okay, what I Abraham. This is what Abraham said. So if I say to you, Abraham said this, I'm not using a new language. I'm using what Abraham said. So Abraham said. So we are going back to the time of Abraham. Today, okay, I word, see your point. I the, see today, your point. the word Hanif did not change. This is because the Arab they stole the word from the Quran, and they do not know what it's mean. So they come with answers which is not an answer because if you try to read any interpretation, every one of them. He give you this is mean maybe he mean this maybe he mean that they don't know muslim do not know they are just guessing all the islamic interpretation for the quran is based on guessing nobody knows if like i will give you an example uh no i know what you mean i know what i'm just thinking about okay if you know that the meaning of the word has changed over time and if you use the original word which has now a different meaning then you would you are saying now what now as at the time of of when the quran was written no then you will cannot, surely it, know it, that no, it, will it cannot be, be it cannot be because hanif is not an arabic word and muslims agree and that is mm -hmm. a statement abraham said in his time so this is the language the aramaic language the old aramaic which is the exist until now. So we cannot say it was not exist. We do not know what it was. We know what it is. We have the language. And there's until now people, they can read it. Until now, okay, there's, so, there's, until now, okay, there, let's, now there is two Aramaic. There's the ancient Aramaic and there's new Aramaic. And there is people who speak the ancient and there's people who speak the new one. So we have them both. It's not like a language, like maybe like the old Egyptian uh, we have only some very few people they can uh, put the word together it take them a lot of work to do it no this is a living language it's not dead in fact aramaic is the most living language between all languages like now you pray in, uh, in english you say amin this is this is aramaic word the word africa is aramaic word the word europe is aramaic word tons of names of countries in europe cities are aramaic words Aramaic is the most living language. When when the Christian they pray, they are using Aramaic. Il, uh, il no, ila, uh, you know. So Aramaic is a very powerful language, and the Quran is just a counterfeit of something else. Obviously, it was written in Aramaic, and this is why the Quran is messed up, and the Muslim can't understand anything in it. So they start guessing what does this mean? Maybe it meant. You will find, like, the, the, the funny thing is, the Quran claim that this is a pure Arabic. If I type the word Arabic, you will see how many times the Quran claim that this is a pure Arabic. Then if you go right now to Google and search foreign language, foreign words in the in the Quran, you will, you will find long list, even the Muslims agree that those are not Arabic. So how the Quran said that this is a clear Arabic Quran, as you see, not only it is a clear, there's no crook in it, which means it is perfect, perfect Arabic, no additional language, pure Arabic. But the second you start, starting from the name of the Quran, Quran is not an Arabic name. This is an Aramaic word. Muhammad is not an Arab, Arabic word. This is an Aramaic word. 
Ar-Rahman is not an Arabic word. This is an Aramaic word. Go to any church. You will see they say Rahman Rahimo. Go right now to any church. They pray in Aramaic. You will hear, you will hear them saying those words. Natrahamu alaykum. So they, you know, everything they have in the religion is a fabrication, is a theft. This is why if you ask a Muslim here, it says Israel. You ask them what Israel means, they don't know. What does Israel mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, what Mikael mean? They don't know. The most important names in Islam, they do not know what they mean. What Gabriel mean? They don't know. Because all those names are a theft from other languages. So what I'm trying to say to you, all your religion is a counterfeit. Stolen from other people, starting from the name Allah, with the name Akbar, with the three daughters of Allah, with the Kaaba, the cube, the black stone, al Makkah, the name Makkah, even the word Makkah is not original. This is coming from the temple of the Makkah, which is in Yemen. And this is the moon god. The symbolic of this. The, did you ask yourself why the crescent moon is the symbolic of Islam? The Muslims, they say this is not necessary. This is necessarily. The Quran mentioned it clearly. The moon, the crescent moon specifically. All the religion of Islam is based, all the festivals, all the occasions, all the rituals is based on the crescent moon. This is not uh, somebody just put a crescent moon by mistake in the top of the mosque. This is the core of Islam. If you go, you, you ask, what is the fasting month in, for the Muslims? Can you tell me? Uh, who? What the is first the first imams? Yeah. Who the first imam is? The fasting, the fasting month. The fasting months. Uh huh. Depends in um, February. No, no, I'm saying what the name March. in Arabic. Ramadan. Ah, uh, no. I'm saying Arabic. Ramadan. The name, the name. Ramadan. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Ramadan. Is Ramadan. Ramadan is a Ramadan a month or this is a moon? Ramadan is a month or moon? Is it a month or a moon? Moon. It is a moon. So here you see the first translation. You see, here in the translation they say, the month of Ramadan, the fact, shahar is an Aramaic word, and it is a Hebrew word too, mean moon. Moon. The moon of Ramadan. Which moon is that? The crescent moon. So whoever of you, and you will notice here that in the moon of Ramadan, the Quran came to Muhammad. So the very much the core of Islam connected to the moon. The Quran came delivered by the moon of Ramadan. So whoever of you cite the moon, you don't cite the month. You see how they lie in the translation always they say moon, month, month. Look, they got themselves busted. So whoever of you cite, you don't cite the month, you cite the crescent moon. Yeah, it says the crescent on the first night. Yeah, but other translation month. doesn't say that. Every translation gives you different, different, different words because all of them, even this one, they are lying because they, 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 they are giving false translation. They are saying the month, which it should be, unless they are ignorant, it should be the, the, the moon of Ramadan which were the Quran revealed. So whoever of you cite the crescent moon of Ramadan, you should fast it. It's about citing. You don't cite a date. You don't cite a month. You cite object. And what object we are talking about? It is the moon. So the moon, the crescent moon specifically, is the core of Islam. Allah is the God of the crescent moon. And this is why we will find the God of Islam he have the moon, the crescent moon, as a horn in the top of his head. It's always uh, uh, important uh, to have this crescent moon as, uh, uh, as a sign of Allah, as a sign of authority. It's like his throne. Okay, let me let me rephrase it. Also, Ramadan is the moon, right? The crescent moon. Uh huh. So it says 
in the month of the crescent moon, also when the crescent moon appears, then you will begin your fasting. Uh -huh. Because there it was revealed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see the problem. What is, why, what is the relationship between the fasting for Allah and the moon? Specifically the crescent moon. It's, it says because uh, it's when the Quran was revealed. Okay, why Allah he revealed the moon in the Quran in the crescent moon of Ramadan? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, th there is a reason because this because is because they he are is the, the because he god. is the moon god, and the crescent moon, you know, the crescent moon is where you know. Have you ever seen uh, Islamic flags? Yeah, there, there's always this okay. question moon. There is something unique about Islamic flag. This is not a new. Islamic flags exist. This is the Arab flags before Islam. You will notice that many of them, they have the crescent moon, and they used to have three stars in the front of the crescent moon. Did you see any of them? They have three stars. No, like the the old Egyptian, the Caliphate uh, star. It was uh, three stars. The crescent moon with the three stars. The three the stars are the moon god stars. Sorry, the the the, the goddess, the daughters of Allah. So, hmm. uh, let me see if I can show you. Here we go. This is the old caliphate. Star. Do you see it? Yes. The moon god, the throne, the three daughters is the three daughters of Allah, the three stars. Do you see the throne of the caliphate? He have the crescent where moon on the top. Uh -huh. So where, where did you get this meaning that it's representing? This the is all goddess? from the. This is from all from the ancient history. You need to read. You can read. There's tons of reference. There's a there's a book written by Muslims. There is a there is a person. His name is Jawad, Doctor Jawad. He's a Muslim guy. Um, I would try to remember his name. Uh, very well known Muslim. He's a historian. He wrote tons of things, you know, and you will find all those stories there too. Even the Muslim could not deny them. Those are books written by Muslims, not by, by Christians. So, like yesterday we showed how, how the black stone was a vagina stone and women, they used to touch it when they have their period. They place their hand inside the vagina, which is the black stone, and they pray to Allah, which is the God of fertility. He will fertilize their vagina and make them have babies. So women, when they have no babies or they cannot make babies, they think, this is what the Arab used to believe before Islam, that uh, if you cannot have babies, that means you commit a sin and Allah is punishing you. So what they do, they go naked around the Kaaba, and let me show you, and you will see now, what is the root of Islam? Everything the Muslim today do is the same as the Arab pagan. So men and women, they used to go totally naked in the state of nudity around the black stone, wearing no clothing. Let us see. The Christian Prince, I have to go now, but uh, thank you. Still I, you wanna, I did some notes and... Still you want to be a Muslim after all what you heard? 
<laughs> I did some notes and I will research about it. All right, no problem. Let me okay, know if you decide you. to leave Islam. Okay, okay. But you know, I advise you not to leave Islam because Allah, He promised you to have endless penis and that is a gift, my friend. Yeah, this is how you know. This is how you know that your God must be the true God because only true God will give you endless penis. Fake God, they cannot do that. You know, let me show you this one before you go. Do you see the screen? Yes. They go around the house of Allah doing what? Naked. In the state of nudity. The first naked beach, it was not in Europe. It was in the town of Muhammad. Do you see it? Uh -huh. Totally naked, men and women, wearing nothing. After they go and do tawaf around the Kaaba, naked, there's a group of men, they provide clothing to those who just had sexual rituals around the Kaaba. Men and women walking naked. The man, his penis is, ooh, ooh, ooh. the woman, her vagina is a dripping blood. They go, the women, she touched the black stone, touch her vagina first, she placed her hand inside the stone. The man, he come after, usually it is her man. He put his penis in the stone and he wrap it over his blood, praying to Allah to make this woman give him babies. That is Islam. And this is the reference, in case you don't believe me, this is very authentic. Mm -hmm. 120.19. Okay, I wrote it down. Thank you. Don't forget to buy a ticket to Saudi Arabia so you can do the same and take us, send us pictures. Um, if I keep, if I keep being a Muslim, yeah, and in case Christianity is so the um, the true religion, what will happen to me? I will what? go to hell. What do you mean? What will happen to me in case? Christianity is the only true religion. What will happen to me as a Muslim? You will, you know, don't worry about what will happen to you. I mean, you will, I guarantee you, you will never get cold. You go to hell first and let us know what happened. All right. So what, what will happen to me according to Christianity? Well, my friend, if you, if you are a Muslim and you believe in such a garbage and you believe that this is holy, after all what I imagine I say to you this, where Jesus used to go there's people they go naked around. I mean this is this is sick what can what is the what is the who is the God what the, this is the Arab their God is Allah they go naked in the Kaaba their God is Allah they are worshiping Allah they call them pagan because supposedly they associate the three daughters with him so what will happen to you is very simple you will be smoked you will be cooked you will be in hell forever <laughs> as simple as that so you stay with Muhammad the pervert man with everything, I mean, everything about him is sick. He did everything sick. He was sick. He's a pervert. He is evil. He is ugly. In the top of that, you discover that he is nothing but a pure pagan, disgusting creature. Okay, so I will go to hell. <laughs> yeah, okay. you will go to hell if you are a Muslim. So you want to stay as a Muslim? Okay, I will think about it. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thank you, thank you. I will come back. I will come back uh, if I've done my research. All right, no problem. You are welcome. Okay, bye-bye. <clears throat> Next.